All right, so now that we're recording, you can watch this again on the YouTube channel. All right, so what is GOSH? I do wanna start out before going into updates, just quickly explaining what GOSH is for anyone who may not have uh, been a part of GOSH before. So it is an international community of open science hardware makers, but also activists, academics, ac academics, lawyers, artists, all sorts of people from across the globe. <clears throat> it is a group of folks that are dedicated to this open science hardware movement. And if you're not familiar with the term open science hardware, it's about making the tools or the machinery that we use to do science open source or free to use, change, study, or distribute. And by making science hardware open, you're allowing more people to have access to the tools that we use to do science. So our biggest goal as a community is to support this advancement of open science hardware, but also to kind of make open science hardware more mainstream, widespread, and understood across the globe. Uh, and then the other big thing about GOSH is that you'll notice that it's centered around its annual gathering for open science hardware, which I'll get to in the next slide. But these two pictures here that I have that I'm showing are from past GOSH gatherings. All right, cool. So a little bit more about the GOSH gatherings. Uh, as I mentioned in the last slide, a lot of the work that's been done in the community has occurred at these large gatherings in the past. So the first one was in 2016 and that was at CERN. So this gathering actually led to the creation of what's called the GOSH Manifesto, which outlines all of the guiding principles and the values of the GOSH community. Then after this, we had another one in Chile in 2017 where the community came together to create a roadmap which outlined all the actions and all the steps needed in order for open science hardware to become ubiquitous by 2025. After that, we had another gathering in 2018 in China. And then from 2019 to 2021, the community was still active virtually, but there were no physical gatherings at that time. And of course, we will get to future gatherings that'll be had for GOSH, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. All right. So I talked a little bit about what GOSH is, what is the GOSH community. Now let's switch gears a little bit and let's talk about what the community accomplished last year in 2021. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the GOSH framework for running community events. So back in April of 2021, we had a group of 15 uh, past GOSH gathering organizers. So this was a group of people who had experience running um, some of the past global GOSH events. They came together and they drafted this document that would become the GOSH framework for running community events. And the reason why they created why they created this was that they were trying to best capture and document what is known as the GOSH spirit, which is this sort of sense of openness and collaboration that is felt among attendees at these gatherings. And they want to do that in a way so that it can be replicated at future GOSH global and GOSH regional events. So in addition to having over a hundred pages of information on how to plan and run a GOSH event, it does also feature a series of 23 profiles on GOSH community members who have attended past gatherings, and it perfectly captures this sort of GOSH spirit. So not only does it have all these important details on who, what, when, where, how to host a GOSH event, it also talks about kind of this GOSH spirit and the sense of collaboration and openness that people felt uh, while being at these gatherings. All right, cool. Next up, I wanna talk about a series of policy briefs that were published through GOSH this past year. So throughout March and July of 2021, GOSH hosted several writing workshops, which resulted in a series of policy briefs and write-ups. So the first one focused on the role of open science hardware and technology transfer. It convened 15 open hardware practitioners and technology transfer officers, and it ended up uh, resulting in this policy brief that you'll see all the way on the right hand here, which is called Open Hardware is Ready to Help Technology Transfer Offices Maximize the Impact of Academic Research. And then the second writing workshop that Gosh went ahead and did this year focused on open hardware and international policy. And it actually convened nearly 30 policymakers from all across the globe. And it resulted in the policy brief all the way on the left this time, which is open hardware, a key for accelerating science and technology towards the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And then the third series of writing workshops that GOSH did, it was a little bit different this time. It was a smaller series of salon style meetings, 
that explored open hardware with funding institutions. And it had about 20 research funders that were convened at each one. So the purpose of these were to connect existing open hardware funders with the broader funders of open research. And it developed guidance on open science hardware, open hardware in general for research funders. Uh, and this resulted in a series of write-ups that were provided a summary of everything that was discussed at these meetings. And you can see an example of this in the middle. All right, cool. I know I've been talking a bit, but I promise I have a couple more slides before we meet some more GOSH people. I do wanna mention that GOSH had several community events that occurred this past year. So every twice a month, open hours are held in GOSH and these are very informal uh, like events. It's an informal standing hour where anyone who's new to GOSH or is already part of the community can come by and say hello, uh, catch up with others or ask me questions as coordinator about things that are going on in GOSH. Uh, after that, we do have one community call a month which you are all uh, here today joined in seeing. Uh, yeah, we do have those once a month which are more structured and facilitated and usually feature about one to two presentations from community members. Uh, and there's usually time for discussions and other community updates from anyone else who joins. And then there's also a really fun GOSH book club. So a couple of us meet um, every month to discuss a book we wanna read together. And then we also decide on another book we're gonna read the next month. All right, awesome. I do now want to introduce Kafid, who we met a little bit earlier, but Kafid is the Africa Osh liaison who's responsible for helping communication channels between GOSH and Africa Osh. So Kafid, please feel free to uh, say hello, share some things. Okay. Hello, everyone. So uh, yeah, <laughs> we started, uh, I'm Abdul Kafid Toko. We, we started working to see uh, the way we can try to, you know, merge these two communities, like the Gosh community, but also uh, the community of people coming from Africa, uh, Osh. And as you know, the first event was held in Ghana, and we have uh, a great community, but we should keep uh, just looking for the way to reach out to them and bring them to uh, the Gosh community so that they can keep contributing for everything that is going on there. So basically, this is what we are trying now, just to uh, provide them the good information from the Gosh community and also giving them some uh, information so that they can keep joining and be active on, on the forum. So uh, yeah, but I think yesterday uh, we have this idea to just start thinking of the way we can keep uh, reach out people uh, out of the uh, the Osh, uh, Africa Osh community that we already know. We keep trying to reach new people, people who are working in the area of uh, open science hardware that we want actually to join us to uh, just keep improving things. So this is basically what I can just say quickly. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Kafid. Uh... Awesome, moving on to the next slide. All right, cool. Another accomplishment uh, this year for GOSH was that we had the formation of the GOSH Community Council, which is the first seated governing body for GOSH. And they were elected, there's seven council members, they were elected in June of 2021. So I am gonna hand things over to Liz and Penn who will share a few things from the council. Hey, thanks, Bree. Um yeah, my name is Liz and I'm here today with Penn from the GOSH Community Council. And we wanted to share a link to an update that was written by um, additional council person, Julian Sterling. And I'll share that in the Zoom chat right now. So there it is, it's in an ether pad and um, Penn and I are gonna present a little bit. So since being elected and thank you to the whole community for that, um, the GOSH Community Council has been meeting weekly, so that's since July of this past year. And we, as we were getting started from no prior existing council, a lot of our work has been setting up what our processes will be and what is the council itself responsible for and how can we use the powers vested in us by the community. So this has been slow but important to do well uh, because the decisions that we'll be able to make together region by region and as a global community will depend on this foundation. So what have 
we've been doing in the meantime, um, we've established a process for running our meetings, um, creating agendas, um, using time for work or using time for deliberation and also for making decisions. And as each council member has been given a mandate, they, we were all voted for, we're working now on bigger decisions requiring 100% consensus. But we're working on how to streamline that and perhaps even go faster while continuing to hear all voices. Now the phrase hear all voices is something that I wanna bring up because it's very important to, um, I think all the people that we see on the council in this generation and broadly um, in the community's will to even create a council at all. So <clears throat> in the constitution is going to lay out, starting with a glossary, what are these key community terms that GOSH uses to talk about itself? And then what are the processes that we use to hold our community together in terms of codes of conduct and um, our manifesto and vision statement that keeps us working together. Now, within that, um, we're, still, we're still left with a council that's meeting with other council people. And I know myself and Penn in particular, and also Laura and Maria are very interested in opening up channels so that we can hear more voices, hear all voices, in some case, bring up a voting process for the bigger decisions, such as actually installing this constitution um, from the broader community. And so, um, yeah, this startup process has been detailed and we've created new cultures in order to be able to work together. And we're extremely excited to be able to turn our attention outward, involve more people in these important community-wide topics for decision-making. And I'd love to hand off to my fellow council person, Penn, now to take away with all the fun details. <laughs> all right, thanks, Liz. Yeah, so um, there are a few more items uh, that are listed in the document. For example, um, you know, one of the things that uh, will probably be part of the constitution is how we create and sustain different working groups uh, for different projects and topics within GOSH, right? And um, we want to do it in a way so that, uh, you know, there's a little bit of structure maybe, but not so prescriptive or so rigid that it will you know, affect the kind of uh, more um, uh, ad hoc kind of ad hocracy organization that people have been working with right now. Um, but it is something we're exploring the constitution and uh, the way we've been doing our own kind of working groups in terms of uh, the grant funding, which I will talk about just now, you know, have kind of followed a certain structure that has worked well for us. So it's something that we're going to continue to work on. Um, so one of those working groups, like I said, is looking at how to um, uh, pass out the funds from the slow foundation grant that um, uh, that was received, you know, a couple of years ago. Um, the grant is currently being held by the GOSH nonprofit, but they hold the money, but it's actually the community council that is currently deciding how to, um, how to make use of it and who to give it to. So there are kind of two parts to that. One, if you've been on the forum, uh, you will see that uh, there has just been a first round um, funding call for funding regional events, right? Uh, we received 20 applications, which is a pretty amazing amount in my opinion, and they're being reviewed by the review panel. Uh, after which they will make recommendations on which project applications to fund. Uh, and after checking with the GOSH nonprofit to make sure you know, that there are no legal issues with it. Um, we expect a second round uh, to open for the regional funding to happen, um, I think in the next few weeks. Uh, very soon, there will also be a call open for the collaborative development grant. 
uh, there's going to be two streams to this, um, uh, depending on kind of like the stage at which a project is at, right? And um, the first phase of this funding will be to let the funded projects seek out the expertise that they need to help them advance their project. And the second phase is to you know, further improve that project. So, the, so, so, so just to summarize, we've been, the Sloan Foundation grant will be used to fund community members to do things, to do two things. One is to fund regional events, and the other one is to um, develop and improve uh, open source um, science hardware projects. Uh, another big thing that has happened is that there is now a working group working on the actual, um, hopefully, in-person uh, GOSH um, gathering, right? the global gathering, uh, which is currently being planned for the last week of October this year in 2022. Mm. And the location that has been chosen is in Panama. And the working group is working on, um, you know, all of the um, all of the details of uh, getting this event set up. But so far, it looks pretty promising, and I'm very excited because I still haven't been to an actual in-person gathering before, and I really hope this one uh, can happen. Um, you know, public health situation permitting, and I really hope to see all of you there in Panama in October. So uh, some of the more immediate things that we're also working on are uh, number one, um, looking at how to organize future writing workshops, uh, making sure that we work out what the constitution looks like. And of course, uh, you know, we're coming up to the first year after the community council has been formed, which means that we need to generate a new set of community council members to replace the ones that will be stepping down uh, in the middle of this year. So uh, we're still trying to work out that, that, that process and really hope to get some of your inputs during that process as well. So uh, those are some of um, the updates that I have. Um, I encourage everyone to go to the GOSH forum and follow uh, the threads posted under the governance category, which I've also just put in the chat. Um, there are two uh, subcategories specific to the community council. One is called council news. So that's where we make announcements such as the meeting notes some of you might have seen. And the other one is called council discuss where you can post in that category to start discussions uh, with ideas that you have or feedback you have for the council. So with that, I just like to thank Liz for being here today. And I also wanna thank uh, all of the community council members uh, plus the governance working group from last year that led to this council being put in place. And of course, I wanna thank uh, Bree for organizing all of these meetings. And lastly, of course, all of the GOSH community members that make this such an amazing community. So thank you so much, over. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Liz. Uh, as always, amazing to hear from you both. Thank you for sharing those updates on behalf of the GOSH Council. Um, only got a couple of quick slides now to go through. Uh, so what's next again for GOSH in 2022? Uh, Penn and Liz did a great job of kind of succinctly explaining most of those things. So I'll just quickly recap some of the uh, biggest ones that are coming up for GOSH in the future. As Penn said, uh, the council is managing the distribution of funds for regional events funding. Uh, so applications did open on the GOSH forum for this and those who, for those who are interested in running regional GOSH events. And although the first round has closed and applications are being reviewed, there will be a second round in the future. Uh, the next GOSH gathering will be in 2022, which is huge after taking a few years off. Uh, as Penn was saying, there is an existing uh, gathering working group you can see a lot of the chatter from working group members on the GOSH forum as we work together to kind of get this off the ground and going. And we are hoping to have that at the end of October. We'd like to have it in Panama, but we can't officially announce anything yet uh, on the forum to the community until we figure out some of the legal stuff first, but it is looking like Panama in October of 2022, which will be pretty exciting. 
Uh, with that, if you want to get more involved in the GOSH community, I recommend joining the GOSH forum, which is like the be all end all of communication of GOSHers. And there is also a GOSH newsletter that you can sign up to where you will receive a newsletter once a month of everything going on, not only in GOSH, but just the broader open science hardware community and environment. Uh, with that, here are the resources that we mentioned today. And these are the same resources that you can find in the community call notes that I pasted in the chat earlier. So that way, if there's anything you really wanna know more about, you can go through and find it there. So with that being said, thank you, Liz, Kafid, Penn for speaking today. And thank you everyone for coming and finding out a little bit more about what's happening in GOSH. So thank you. <laughs>